Hello! So we are about to go back into my office where we're going to talk all about integration. So it's about language, of course. Everything is language. As long as I'm speaking to you, it is language, right? And I just want to show a side, my side, my version, I guess, of what language is is and more than that i want to show and just share how i have the perspective of language that i have and i know that the only way that you guys can really really understand what i do and where my perspective comes from is for me to share with you where that perspective comes from because it doesn't just come from like learning languages or studying linguistics, although I do those things. It's so much more than that because it's it's more of a mindset and it's my perspective on not just learning but on really on life and it's influenced by so many different factors and today you're really going to see a lot of that because you know like right now what I'm doing I have my you know my skincare and all that my skin doesn't look great right now I don't know what you're thinking this is not a great skincare routine look at your skin <laughs> but um, that is not because of my skincare routine that is because of my skin picking and anxiety that leads to that which I am working on but this is part of who I am. I like to be natural. I like to not wear I own makeup now. I went several years without even owning makeup and then I began experimenting again and especially when I started here, when I started YouTube, I felt like I had to be this person, like this camera person, like I had to be better than what I am and Snoopy is making noise that I had to I don't know I had to wear makeup I had to have this presentation of like what other people had and that's really not the case that's actually the beauty of what I do now and the reason that I was so drawn to this to content creation to having my own business to all of this because I wanted to have my own style. I wanted to be able to just be myself and have that be okay, you know? I never have fit into the like classification of a teacher of math or of Spanish or of English or anything really and I spent so long trying to find this like normal this trying to normalize and trying to just be someone who was accepted and it never worked for me because it is not who I am it wasn't authentic and it didn't work so it took me a long time to really get here and it's I'm still getting there to be quite honest like there's always another level and I know that throughout my entire life there is going to be this other level right there's always going to be some way that I can improve and that is what I want like I want to be always improving I and that's why I like what I'm doing because I am never finished with it but yeah, I always just have felt like I learned how to do all these jobs and then I'm done and it's just like, okay, what's next, what's next, what's next kind of thing. So that's what's so beautiful with this and a little bit more of what I'm going to be sharing with you guys today is how we are always just continually progressing and improving and it's not that you have to have more. You don't always have to have more but it is that progress that is just so rewarding and so we're gonna integrate some yoga and some snoopy down here and yeah you 
are welcome to join me in my yoga practice but I am no yoga teacher and it's just my personal routine and uh, you do what feels good for you or just watch because I will be continuing this conversation as I do my yoga. So as I do my yoga here and as I I basically each day I start out my morning by rolling out my mat and I just get ready for the day. I like to start with some exercise in the morning because it just makes me feel better throughout the day and then I feel like it helps me to focus when I get into my work and as I mentioned like just a few minutes ago that also with my face and my anxiety and everything like that exercising helps to just get the energy out and let me focus on what I actually need to do that day so yeah I start like I'm stretching here and I just kind of flow through whatever I feel like I need to do that day so I feel like I need a lot of stretching in a standing position and I do that. Sometimes I'll start in a seated position. It just really depends on what my body tells me I need that day. So I'll just kind of feel through that and stretch and I will go from there and a little snoopy comes and goes as I'm exercising. So. The reason I wanted to integrate this into my language video today is because I wanted to show that there is so much more to what I do than just studying language, right? So I also, as you see, I'm practicing my yoga and, you know, I practice my karate too. But more than that, the skills that make me successful as a language learner and a teacher are much the same as those that make me successful in athletics, which I am working on to make up my progress with my flexibility and especially my like hip flexibility here and my strength and flexibility. And a lot of this is daily practice or even even if it's not every day, but regular practice over time. And that's something that especially karate has taught me is that these skills, they are not learned quickly. You know, they're not just learned in a matter of a few months or a few days or any short amount of time. It's a little snoopy. And it takes time and as you progress through the skills, and at least I know like as I progress, I used to have to watch yoga videos to do yoga or go to yoga class or like any of that. I've never taken like a yoga teacher training class or anything like that, although I would love to one of these days. But I just do like, I create my own process like I mentioned because I've done enough of participating in other classes that now I can just do my own thing and like I can feel how my body moves and I know myself as an exerciser I guess I would say but karate has taught me that and although this is yoga many of the techniques and just the awareness that I have of my body I've learned from karate so with language I've learned that the more aware I become of myself as a learner and how I interpret information and share information like as a teacher and of course the reading, writing, listening and speaking skills, but the more that I learn about myself and my process, the more I can create my own process and it develops over time. And I do have to start, like when I learn a new language, I do start by just learning from other people, learning from teachers, learning from books, learning from whatever is, uh, whatever resources I have. But 
over time, like with any language, as you progress, as you learn, after you've learned the basics of grammar and vocabulary, then you can begin to just let it out, right? You can just let out your, when I say let it out, I mean you can speak with another person, you know, you can have a conversation and create your own combination of those words rather than just memorizing and repeating, which is needed in the beginning stages, but the further you get, the more you can create your own process, just like with exercise, like with yoga and with karate. And it's, there's so many skills that are much the same between these practices. And I am going into, I'm beginning with integration and I'm going into so many different topics like with balance how you know you have to find of course like a physical balance within karate and within yoga we do actually practice balance but balance isn't just in one place and flexibility like when i'm lying here stretching like i am practicing my flexibility physically but my flexibility is not just within my body like it is you know it's my my hip flexibility or my within my chest within my back within whatever it is whatever i'm working on but it's more than that it's the ability to adapt and overcome to determine what i need and be flexible in that regard to adjust and even as little snoopy comes in to adjust to whatever that need is at that time so that is the way that I see learning, the way that I see this process. And to me, it's just so beautiful how we can integrate, at least how I can integrate all of this. And I know it's different. I know that other people might not see it this way, but this is how I see it. And I just love this process so, so much. I love taking like this cat cow position that I learned, you know, through a yoga class and being able to just integrate it into my practice because that's what I feel like I need right now. I feel like I need some stretching for my back and my chest and some breathing exercise. And something that even came up as I was going through this is that I noticed that we're taught to breathe to inhale right inhale and our chest sorry our well our chest and our stomach will they expand when we're inhaling because there's air coming in and then we exhale and they contract but i started to notice at least for myself that when i'm doing this the inhale and the exhale it's less of that like it is when you um, expand and contract but i found that especially like as it gets warm that it's just a more natural breathing process and i do tend to naturally exhale when i am you know when i'm when my muscles are contracting but it's not like a process like you can say okay like when you are doing this specific position you need to <laughs> look at snoopy you know you need to exhale and then you know when you are doing this other position you need to inhale it's good practice but really you can just let it flow and your body will know how to do it if you've practiced it correctly you will it'll create a process that works for you and if you just listen to that then it will just guide you through what you need after you've learned all those foundations so like if i know i need i need that you know that movement that stretching then i do that if i feel like I am ready to just sit and stretch and you know, work on my hip flexibility and my you know sitting tall against the wall that I will do that. And it just is really self-awareness that I learn and that I practice. And that self-awareness is how we learn and how we become better 
students and better teachers and more effective really is what I mean by better. We begin to know ourselves because it's not about finding the perfect method of teaching, the perfect learning style, the perfect strategy, because even if something is perfect for one person, it's not necessarily going to be perfect for another, right? So I learned all of these different techniques, like even for stretching, for working on my splits, for stretching, which I've lost quite a bit of my, flex my flexibility because I overdid it a little bit and uh, I had to take a break and now I'm back at it, but uh, I've lost quite a bit. And working on strengthening as well also uh, diminishes my flexibility a little bit if I don't balance them because as we strengthen, then the, we actually can lose a little bit of flexibility if we're not also working on flexibility. It's, it is just that balance of flexibility and strength. Just like you need a balance in everything else that you do. If you do too much of any one thing, like even with language learning, if you are just doing speaking but you're not doing any writing, or if you're just doing speaking and writing but you're not doing any like listening and reading, you don't, you, you can't. You can't do speaking without listening because even if you're just speaking to yourself, you are listening to the way that you're producing those sounds. Even if you are writing, you are reading what you write as you write it, usually, <laughs> and so you can't do one without the other. They have to exist together. It all has to exist together, just like strength and flexibility have to exist together, and the one pulls the other. So really, just this, this concept of balance and how it is more than just, you know, like standing up with like having your balance, it is like just being able to move and being able to just know what you need and find that perfect mixture. So yeah, he's a little snoopy. And little snoopy, he doesn't have much balance. He just does what he wants. <laughs> but yeah, so I do my stretching over here and really what I have learned through this is just to to flow through it because I've tried many 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 different strategies and the ones I found to be most effective for me like I've tried timed stretching and you know like time learning and time things and I really, I really don't like timers to be honest but I try you know these time things like okay do this this many times do this for this long stretch you know your legs you know your, your uh, we were supposed for this amount of time and it can work like those are good guidelines but ultimately when you really just tune into what you actually need that's when you're going to see the most improvement because it's going to be based on you so that's what I'm getting further into and especially with this whole topic of integration how we can and not just integrate in like of course my that like the language skills you know reading writing speaking and listening but also all of these components of what makes us learn what makes us healthy people well-rounded people because i found that like with exercise i do better and more focused and more productive and it just it positively affects my education as well and I found that as I'm doing this like even as I'm stretching and I'm like oh I have this resource I have right I have this tie what do you call these there's like rubber ties but I have this I'm like oh I want to use this right now so then I use that because I know I have that resource available to me and I just use it, I've used it in classes or, you know, trainings and use it specific ways and kind of got an idea of how it works. And now in my own practice, I just say like, okay, well, I feel like I want to stretch my, my leg and my hip or that I want to work my, uh, my abs a little bit and then I might use it for that. And I just go for it. Like I just allow my body to move with it 
and it does because I've had training in some areas so I've had those like drills almost like we would have with a language class or a class I guess you can have drills and exercise too they're a little different but yeah I just use that and I adjust I move and pivot and I notice you know it's not working where I am and I just adjust my position and I keep going in it and yeah so I really see especially here like with the resources and within this like we have physical resources here of course with exercise just like how when you're learning a language you have your resources of you know you might say oh i know i need more practice in my speaking so i'm going to record myself and then listen and make corrections or i know that i need to practice my pronunciation so i am going to work with a teacher or a tutor that I have available for me and I'm going to let them know that this is the area I need to improve on and use that resource for that specific need. So it's really about looking at what you have and using that but also just trusting yourself through that process of saying like, okay, what do I feel like I need and finding that balance within yourself of what you need and what you can do with what you have and you can actually look for it but if you just follow that it will guide you to where you need to what you need and where you need to go and you can make modifications if you need to i'm really really working on my core strength right now because it is not where i want it to be there are some activities I guess you could say that I would like to do in karate that I just don't have the core strength for and I am not so great at doing like crunches and actually lifting all the way up without the support of my feet under something or just you know some kind of support and I just thought hey I've got my feet in here I'm gonna try just using this and it does assist me a little bit in pulling like up to my feet but it does also like I can feel that my core muscles are being used because I'm tuning into that area of my body and I'm feeling it and then I do that for a little while and then I say, okay it's getting kind of sore I need a little break let me do something else so since I've got this tie already then I'm just gonna shift it a little bit and do a different exercise <laughs> and that also happens to be a little bit of core a little bit of leg a little bit of glute <laughs> uh, everything lower body and yeah it's just that adjustment so just like when you know when I'm doing my language learning like as I'm studying my Mandarin I feel like okay I want to study something and I'm not sure exactly what I want to do but I know I want to do some kind of practice I allow myself to choose like okay I want to practice on Duolingo because I just want to do some like listening and then repeating and some memorization aspects and yeah I just feel like using my phone and doing that or maybe I want to actually do more writing then I will you know pull out one of my books and I'll write in it and I do the tracing and it's very almost mindless to go over it because it's just tracing the characters so it's not a lot like with with the duolingo i have to think a little bit more to pronounce the words and there's some grammar that i'm learning in there and while there is also some grammar in the books it is i just say it's more mindless because it is mostly the actual writing that i'm working on there but yeah whatever it is i just adjust from there <laughs> and just like when i'm you know stretching i'm like hmm I'm going to lift up and I'm going to go down and I'm going to do whatever I can with what I have. So yeah, I'll do that. I'll do my writing and then, you know, then I'll be working on that and then I'll think, hmm, you know what? It would be nice to have this written in my own notebook so then I might go and write it in my own because it just I just follow that, what I feel like I need. And I have that structure of like hey, I'm going to do this practice, I'm going to do this Mandarin, or hey, I'm going to do yoga right now, but I don't control how I do it. I allow myself to do it how it feels good for me. 
and then I just kind of flow through it. And when I want to move around, you know, I'm like, okay, you know, I do a little bit. Sometimes I go back to stretching after I do my exercise and I just flow through it. And then as with anything else, <laughs> we have to really just kind of jump in there and get started practicing and trying to figure out how to do it, like with learning a language or learning anything. I am currently trying to learn how to do a handstand and so I've been working on my inversions and for a while I couldn't even get up the wall because it was not necessarily an ability thing but it just that I didn't have the confidence I think to like climb up the wall even like this and I finally did get to that point so now I am still not anywhere really close I'm not straightened out at all I'm still like you know pretty far away from the wall but I'm practicing just you know slowly getting comfortable moving away from the wall and with each of my legs and one of these days, you know, I get, I get like closer and closer each time I go up there. So I just keep working on that and just like tuning into what I need. And I will gradually get closer to the wall to bring into more of an actual inversion. And it's already an inversion, but I'll get closer so that it's more um, straight. So that I have a straight line. Uh, but I do that for a little bit and it's also strengthening for my arms so my arms do get tired and then I will go back into stretching and do whatever I feel like I need and so I'll go you know through my routine just kind of feeling out what feels good shift back off of my arms if those are sore and I always am pretty sore in my shoulders so I've been experimenting with different techniques I can use to stretch my shoulders and especially like in the cool down period of my exercise when I'm stretching then I can just you know like go into child's pose and just kind of stretch on my shoulders to stick one of my arms through stick the other arm through and and just lie down and relax into it so I'll do that for a while and I always try to make sure that I am both pushing myself and also not pushing too hard. Really finding that balance again there, balance is a key because even with academics, I noticed that like, yes, we do have to push, but it's equally important to know when is enough. Like when is, you know, when is our brain tired? It's equally important to know that. And then just like with exercising, of course, like exercising, you know, if you go too much, you push too hard, then you can actually injure yourself, which I have done. And so it's a really, it's so important to know how much you can do in the amount of time that you have and that you're working with and to just, trust that and know when you get tired know when you're tired and you actually can't keep going and when you just are wanting to give up it's very important to discern that and that's something that i'm working on right now is figuring out that difference and it's always going to be there it's always going to be like okay like i need to stop because i'm tired it's like okay well, am i tired or Am I just not wanting to like, am I just being lazy or I just not wanting to keep going? So that's true for exercise and for stretching. I like guess I'm like stretching. I'm like, okay, this feels good. I want to stretch more, but it's starting to hurt. Well, is it starting to hurt because it is beyond where I should be pushing myself? Or is it starting to hurt because it is a good hurt, <laughs> like a stretch? and I need to stay there a little bit longer to get that stretch in. So it's really just determining where that is for each person, each individual. So that is what I'm working on also with my academics is really not pushing myself too hard because for me, that's what I need the most. I need to realize that <laughs> I don't need to do everything at once. 
I don't need to take a million classes. I need to just do what I'm doing well and also make time for relaxation, which I love at the end of my exercise, just like lying here. And I really like this one because it's also a stretch. The, uh, we call it the Gumby stretch in karate. And you just, yeah, just lie back there. And if you can get all the way back, and I just lie there for a while and get my stretch in and for me it's relaxing because my shoulders are down on the floor and some of my back, some of my upper back, but yeah, it's a pretty good pose for me just to relax and so with learning as well, it's important to have like, you know, those exercises where you can relax into them where the, like listening exercises, like if you watch a movie in a language then it's like you get to practice the language but it's also relaxation time so this is my stretching but it's also my relaxation time and it's also part of my yoga practice so really integrating between that too so as you can see like the connection between stretching and language learning and then also that integration of a relaxation and productivity which exists within both and and then at the end i just uh lie back in shavasana and just kind of hang out and my favorite was <laughs> just to relax at the end and sometimes i'll just lie here and i have my oh i have my music in my ears this I this whole time i've had it plugged in so that it could really be just my natural state of exercising that's why uh, that's why I'm doing this voiceover instead of like actually talking through while I'm doing it because I wanted my exercise to be my practice. I wanted to show what I actually do and you even can tell because Snoopy is in here and he usually is like jumping all over me. I know he's like he's somewhere right now but when I'm talking to my camera, he's usually all over me. But when I'm just doing my exercise, like I mentioned in my karate video, he's not usually so obnoxious. <laughs> but uh, when he, right now, this is like my natural state of exercising in the morning. So I wanted to show this and share this with you guys because this is how I'm able to get myself into my state of learning and productivity and to just flow through my days because I start my mornings like this. So I don't always do the exact same routine, but I do my journaling and then I go into exercise of some form. Some days it looks like this, like rolling out my yoga mat and then at the end just lying there and just like, you know, letting everything integrate and just relaxing. And some days it looks like stretching a little bit and then going out for a run. Some days it might look like practicing my karate. If I'm just like, okay, I have this new technique I really want to work on, then I'll practice that. And of course, I always do some form of stretching just to get started. Here comes little Snoopy. I knew at some point he came in here because when I opened my eyes, he was there. And when, when I lied down, he wasn't. But I didn't even feel him come lie down next to me. He just uh, snuggled up there and <laughs> yeah, he wants to join in on the, the yoga. But yeah, it looks different each day. And even when I do my yoga, like I don't do the exact same positions each day. I just move with it. And then the same is true for my learning. Like I never do the exact same thing each day. I just think, like, okay, what do I need to do now? What do I need to improve in? And then I'll work on that. And also just tune into what doesn't feel practiced. <laughs> so when I'm exercising, like what doesn't feel good? You know, it's like what's sore, I, I'll leave that alone, give it some time, and then come back to it. So that is my yoga practice, and, and then I just tune out, and I'm good to go. So yeah, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I know <laughs> it was a little different than if you made it to the end of this. It's a little long, too, but I felt like this was the best way to really show you what I do and how my perspective is influenced by everything, you know, by exercise, by yoga, by karate, by all of these different parts of my lifestyle. And, and then even, you know, just something as simple as like cleaning everything up at the end and putting everything away. 
but that is part of my lifestyle. Like I like everything to be in its place. So I pick up my mat, I pick up my blanket, I pick up everything and I put it away. And I do the same thing with my learning. I keep everything organized and where I want it ready for the next time. So yeah, I really hope that you guys enjoyed this and let me know down below in the comments any ideas that I have, any thoughts, ideas that have come up as you were watching this, any thoughts about just anything, this video, or I guess overall, I would love to hear from you and I will be responding to comments. I will see you guys next time. Bye.